So thank you all for being here. Uh, we're just waiting for the PATV fee to, we're, we're good? We're good. Okay. So um, it is 7.12 p.m. on uh, Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. We are here for the public hearing on the uh, PBD Public Schools fiscal year 23 budget. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here today, whether you're here in person with us at the Higgins or we are being recorded on uh, Facebook Live and I think on uh, PBD Access Television as well. Uh, I apologize to all of you um, for being a little tardy. Uh, we had an executive session before this budget meeting, uh, so uh, we, got, um, we had some work to take care of before we came out here, uh, but we did consume some of your time and I apologize to you for that. So with that, um, we are opening up the uh, public hearing for the fiscal year 2023 um, PBD Public School budget, and I'll hand it over to Dr. The Dollar at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hawkman. So pleased to be here tonight. Uh, put a lot of time and effort. A lot of people uh, have shared in the work for this budget, and I think we have a good budget to move forward that we can feel good about. That really helps align with our mission of hope. Uh, again, our, our core tenants that need to dr drive our decision making this year are really about stability and sustainability. We really want to make sure that we're putting forth a budget that is going to be stable over many years and that is also going to be sustainable, that we're not going to fall off that proverbial cliff. So our, our decisions need to provide that stability to the district and they have to be sustainable over time. Much of our focus over the past two years has been to build the capacity of our current staff and to support our students. So the long-term implications of our decisions must be considered in order to ensure that we can maintain this for many years to come. Again, we look at our vision of hope, high expectations for every student every day, optimism for every student every day, personalized learning for every student every day, and equity and access for every student every day. This year, we really tried to focus on student and staff support, supporting our educators so that they may support our staff. It took a long process as we went through this budget, and it began as early as January when we got the governor's number, where we created a budget template or a working document based on the actual costs of FY22, which were around $81 million. And then we anticipated our, our step and lane changes, and you know that gave us a level service budget. Then we went with our principals, our department heads, uh, to identify additional budget priorities for FY23. This was by identifying the needs of the current school year, 2021-2022. We met with the school committee members individually and the mayor to make sure that we identified their additional budget priorities to make sure that we had a comprehensive document. Back in March, we proposed our first draft budget of FY23. And we worked collaboratively over the next two months to, uh, with the school committee and, and, and different stakeholders to really understand you know, what the needs are for the district. And we created a budget book that was in uh, for, for tonight's vote that was within the appropriated amount that was approved by Mayor Betancourt. And again, tonight and in previous meetings, we'll be communicating other funding sources uh, to the community that will help supplement this budget, including our ESSER funding, our federal grants, et cetera. So comparing FY22 to FY23, the FY22 budget, the appropriated budget that we voted on last year on June 8th was $76,604,358. That came from $23 million in Chapter 70 and $53.5 million from the municipal contribution. Through a lot of work over the past year, we were able to identify and, and uh, claim more low-income students, and with the influx of money from the Student Opportunity Act, our Chapter 70 funding for next year has risen $7.5 million to $30,686,005, which means that our appropriated budget that we're proposing tonight of $83,106,902, which is $6.5 million over last year's budget, actually is a reduction of the municipal contribution. So even though we're going up six and a half million dollars, because of the increased state funding, the city's allocation is about a million dollars less. And to show this again, I'll, I'll show this, this slide which we've seen before. 
above the line, this line that goes across the middle of the page, this is directly from the DESE website. So last year in FY22, our foundation budget was $74 million. We had $23 million from Chapter 70 and $50.9 million as a required contribution. At last year's meeting, we talked about the need to support our teachers and to support our students coming back from the pandemic. And the city graciously gave us an additional $2.5 million allocation above minimum net school spending. That's where we came with the $76.6 million. Through the union's advocacy for the Student Opportunity Act, the committee's advocacy, and people in the community who have worked tirelessly to make sure that our Chapter 70 money would be fully funded, that has come to fruition, and we are in year two of seven. That is why our aid has gone up from $23 million to $30 million. And so we're putting forth a budget that we think is sustainable. Desi was telling us that our increase should be $9.5 million. And in good faith, we can't advocate for a budget that amount because it's not sustainable. So we're advocating for $6.5 million above last year, which is fully funded from this money from Chapter 70. So it's not costing the district any more, it's not costing the city any more money than it did last year. We know that the proposed budget is a value document. And we wanted to make sure that we put, it, that we put the money in the appropriated account and the appropriated budget that really is where it's going to impact students the most. So on the top left of this slide, you see that the difference is six, oops, sorry, is $6.5 million. That's on page two of your budget book. So if you, if you open up your budget book, you'll see that the increase on page two at the very bottom for FY23, the difference amount in the bottom right-hand corner is that $6.5 million. That's where it's reflected in the budget book. It's made up of two line items that we'll vote for tonight, salaries and non-salary. Out of the $6.5 million increase from last year, $4.9 million will go to salaries. That's this column here on the left. 25.4 teachers, or $2.6 million. We've put money in there for step and lane changes, as well as a salary reserve or a COLA item. That's $1.3 million. We have 26 uh, FTEs for paras and library tutors, 1.4 administrators. 3.4 instructional staff, the non-instructional staff. That's our building access attendance, technology, and clerical. And then we also raised the athletic game staff because uh, the fees for referees and things are more. In addition, we have our non-salary items that we had to increase. Uh, the cost for out-of-district tuitions is going up. We want to make sure we budget that accurately. We know that transportation costs are rising, so we budgeted that appropriately. There's an increase in employee benefits, so we made sure to, to add an increase there. Uh, we've added additional technology that we need uh, for our students and our staff, as well as increased money for our athletics, our school's ordinary budgets or non-salary budgets to make sure they have enough supplies, as well as our performing arts. To break down the salary increases a little bit further and to provide a little bit more detail, the 25.4 teachers that are included in the FY23 uh, appropriated budget that were not in it last year include three general education teachers, 9.4 special educators. That includes teachers, BCBAs, speech therapists, and the point four is an occupational therapist that has gone from point six to a full position. It includes four new ELL teachers, two guidance positions, four school adjustment counselors, and three school psychologists. The administrators in the appropriated budget is an additional team chairperson, as well as the vocational director going from a point six position to a 1.0 uh, position or full-time position. The paras and tutors that were outside of the appropriated budget that are going in include four additional pre-K paras that we talked about at the last meeting, uh, bringing our kindergarten paraprofessionals, it's 12, but it's really 24 part-time back into the appropriated budget, five new special education paras, um, and our library tutors. So it's five FTEs or 10 part-time. And then our non-instructional staff, as I mentioned, is our two building access attendants that we discussed at the last meeting for the high school, as well as a technology, uh, additional technology person to help with uh, the, uh, all of the new devices that we have on and, and, and onboarding. Uh, and then point four clerical, which is uh, two positions that, were that went from point eight to 1.0. A graphical represent representation of this um, shows that 
our teachers, counselors, and psychologists make up 54% of that salary increase. But if you combine the teachers, counselors, and, and psychologists with our paras and tutors and the step and lane changes, that's over 94% of the salary increases going right where the teachers are, uh, right, right where the students are. So uh, we really feel like we've put the money where we think we value it the most in our teachers and in our paraprofessionals that can support our students. So I'll pause here. I know we have some, some um, motion language, but I'll pause for questions, and I know that there's an opportunity for public comment. Mr. Olympio? Um, I'd, I'd like to make this. I'll pause for now. Mr. Amico? I just wanted to know if we were going to go around the room before we. No, I think we're going to make a motion and then we're going to um, have discussion on the motion. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Olympio? I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed salary line item and the FYI uh, 2023 budget in the amount of $56,158,935. Motion made by Mr. Olympio, seconded um, by Mr. Swanson. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Okay. Mr. Olympio, I'm going to ask you to withdraw your motion temporarily. Withdraw. So my apologies again to the to the people sitting here. This is my first time leading a public budget session. Um, we're going to open up the floor to public comment before we take on any motions. So if anyone in the audience wishes to make any comment on um, the FY23 proposed budget that is published and Dr. Vidal just spoke of, please step forward to the table, um, state your name, your address, and uh, what you'd like to say to us. On the right, is that it? Thanks. Good evening. My name is Eric Blake, Five Hilltop Drive here in Peabody. I'm also the president of the Peabody Federation of Teachers, um, and I just have a quick statement. Having an opportunity to read the proposed budget is clearly evident that what the Federation views as important has been for the most part overlooked. The Federation has always been of the opinion that the best use of any money is money that is spent in the classroom, not outside of the classroom. <clears throat> this budget, proposed budget, only scratches the surface of what is truly needed in our schools to improve student outcomes and success. Rather, the focus is on non-classroom administrative positions. We have an opportunity to right now with the influx of aid to do what's best for our students and provide them with much needed support. Over the past two years, we have watched our students struggle both inside and outside of the classroom. This is time to take the needs of our students to heart and act to provide them with the support they need to be successful the Federation asked the committee to reconsider the proposed spending on positions that do not have a direct in-classroom impact on the students. We also act that the emphasis be on establishing smaller class sizes, creating more positions working directly with students, and providing the tools and proper training to get the job done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Ms. Nesmantowski. This one. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Patty Neswintowski. Uh, I live at 1 Richardson Row, Peabody, Mass. And I am one of the vice presidents of our union. And um, I have many concerns regarding this year's 86 plus million dollar budget. I just want to address the ones that I think directly affect student outcomes. The first, to me, is the inequitable 
ratio of newly added administrative positions compared to the number of teaching and para positions that have been added. Teachers and paras are the backbone of education. They directly affect student achievement on a daily basis. I believe this money would be better spent by adding teaching staff, reducing class size, fulfilling wish list supplies for teacher, teachers, increasing the number of full and part-time paraprofessionals, elimination or at least decreasing the fees parents pay for buses and athletics, and professional development needs to have more monies put in it, bringing in experienced people to, to give this development in all areas. Another concern I have is how this budget, which is the largest ever, and I know that's due to the federal grants, will continue to be maintained. We have been told that Chapter 70 monies will increase after the grants from COVID expire. But more often than not, our state elected leaders make well-intentioned promises that they do not fulfill. As many of us have wit witnessed previously, myself included, it is the teachers and the paras who pay the price when there are budget cuts. That affects the students. Administration is seldom affected by budget cuts. As a retired teacher and, the product, and a product of the PBD school system, I sincerely hope you will consider these issues now and for future budgets. And I feel it's time we put the pride back in PBD. And I thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Ms. Nismatowski. Thank you. Good evening, members of the school committee. Uh, my name is Julie Murray, and I have been a teacher at the Thomas Carroll School since September of 2000. I'm currently a grade five teacher, but during my time at the Carroll, I've also taught grades one, two, and four. Every morning when I log on to Aspen to take attendance, I see the HOPE acronym and the phrase, every child, every day. PBD's mission statement speaks to equity and access for curriculum, student support, and emotional learning. However, this year and slated for next year, this is not happening at the Carroll, especially in the fifth grade this year. Other schools at the fifth grade level have classes as low as 15 and 16 this year and are slated for those numbers next year. The current fifth grade classes at the Carroll have 25 and 25th students this year and are projected to have 24 and 25 next year. But we know that number will increase. In other words, right now, a grade five Carroll teacher is teaching and trying to meet the individual needs of our very diverse population and almost double the enrollment of those classes of 15. What's particularly frustrating is this group of fifth grade students, last year in fourth grade, there were five classes and they were merged down to four this year. If we stayed at five, we'd still be at 20 and 21. There is no equity of class size, which in turn affects the educational opportunities of our students with our curriculum, our student support, and especially post-COVID student emotional support. In my grade five class this year, I have nine ELL students, three of which are level one, seven IEPs, 12 students who have received tier two support, and three additional students in the IE testing phase now. I imagine how I could even have further met their needs with a smaller class. I employ you to see that the number of classes that are graded at a school should not be the deciding factor, but the number of students per class across the grade levels with equity of size and educational fairness for all students to be uppermost in deciding your budget. At this time, teachers are frustrated and disappointed with the increase of money spent on new and top-heavy additional redundant administration. 
the foundation of education is in the classroom with general education teachers, special education teachers, support teachers in math and reading, ELL teachers, power professionals, and guidance counselors. Money should be directed in the first instance to support our frontline teaching rather than creating new administration positions or making assistant principals for the smaller schools full time. We need more classroom teachers for smaller class sizes for all, not just for some. Classroom teachers are tasked with deciding when doing small group instruction. Do I have smaller groups with the just right fit but have so many that I can't see them often or do I do smaller um, smaller amounts of groups with more children and not really fitting the needs, but I see them more often. We also need additional math and reading teachers. Right now at the Carroll, we have a reading and math teacher for one for K to two and three to five. Three to five reading and math teachers are tasked with supporting students from 14 classrooms. Doesn't work when you're trying to do the inclusion model. Our ELL level one groups have been between 15 and 17 students which is more than some gen ed classrooms in Peabody. We also can always use more power professionals who are so integral to students' success. We have one general ed guidance counselor for almost 600 students. As we know, with these large classes, it is an impossible task for even the most phenomenal teachers to provide personalized instruction and meet the student social emotional needs for our diverse population. I look at the numbers for the classes of the Carroll next year and see that grades one and two will be just 10 students away from opening a new class. Grade three students, classes will be starting at 21 each. Grade four are all starting at 24, and grade five will be starting at either 24 or 25. Kindergarten is not set, but last year we started with 68 students, and we added 22 throughout the year. So our largest kindergarten right now is at 24. The Carroll School has influxes of students all year long, and you need to leave us room to add students to grow to those classes. In closing, I invite the members of the school committee to come to my classroom and my colleagues' rooms just to see how crowded the learning environment is with those 25 and 26 students. I look forward to seeing you in my classroom soon and seeing how the school committee plans to address the equity of class size and in educational opportunities for the students of the Carroll School. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murray. <clears throat> oh, sorry. My name is Bonnie Anderson. I am a teacher in the science department at the high school. I live in Lynn, 281 Western. I don't think it matters, but um, I am here to support my fellow teachers and my fellow paraprofessionals and the rest of the staff. And we do need more of them. We do not need it from the top down. These students need it from the bottom up. But I'm actually here to address another issue that is very important, our working conditions at the high school. I'm actually here to talk about toilet seats. As ridiculous as that sounds, for this year, we have had bathrooms for students and teachers that are not usable. The toilet seats in the third floor at least the women's, A house and B house, third floor bathrooms for women, look like somebody poured acid on them. And I dare anyone to sit on one of those. That has been like that since the beginning of the year. And yes, the requests were made to have that fixed, and it hasn't been fixed. To the best of my knowledge, it has not been fixed yet. Student toilets are covered with trash bags because they don't all work. Sinks are leaking, toilets are leaking, and these things have all been mentioned from the beginning of the year, and some of these leaks have been in effect year after year. It's like, oh, it's leaking again. It would be wonderful if some of the money in the budget could go to fixing some basic things like toilet seats. They can't be that expensive. 
And yes, I'm a little upset that I have to sit here and ask for them here. OK, so I wrote a little list this time. Exit sign. So I go to walk to my classroom. It's on the second floor. And I pass an exit sign every single day that is hanging by one wire. Now granted, it's probably some students, probably not a teacher, probably some students who went up and went boop and hit it. But why has it, hasn't it been fixed in all this time? I walk past that every single day. It's also a safety issue. That could fall on somebody. And I think the wire is exposed, which is also a safety issue. Leaky toilets, broken toilet seats. One of the toilet seats, the little lug nuts on the bottom or whatever, they're not there. So you literally sit on the seat and you slide because it moves. Exposed electrical wires in the science lab. Now, I realize that we need a new high school, desperately. And I realize it will take some time to get that high school, probably after I retire. But there are certain things that could be fixed now for not a whole lot of money. Toilet seats, for sure, can't cost that much. Can't. But the wiring is dangerous. I just did the frog lab with my students last week in a lab room where the electrical cover is off and you can touch the wires. That's not safe. Yes, it's high school, but they still stick their fingers in things, absolutely. Clogged lab sinks. Don't use those sinks because those don't, those don't empty. Only use these two. I was in a room that had eight sinks. We could only use two of them safely. Um, the door locks. It's almost, it's not a joke, but we laugh about it because it's so ridiculous. The teacher next door to my classroom has not been able to use a key, nor can anyone else. Even when we had the, um, the uh, emergency lockdowns, nobody could open her door. It doesn't work. The door lock does not work. And every year, she puts in, the door lock doesn't work. It hasn't been fixed. There are at least five doors that I know of in my department that the lock does not work. That's a safety issue. Where is the money to fix those things? That should be a priority. And that's my biggest thing. When I hear, oh, we're going to add this, we're going to add that, I'm like, priorities need to be adjusted here. These are safety concerns. We've been living with these things for years at the high school. And I'm sure the other schools, the older schools, probably have issues as well. But I'm here speaking for the high school because that's what I know. And this is what I live every single day. Oh, great, my phone just. <laughs> OK, so broken locks, bathrooms, the labs, the classrooms, we have broken locks, not just one or two rooms. And that's only in the science wing. That The rest of the school probably has more. The heat, I understand that our heating system's very old, and we need parts made sometimes for it. But we were without heat. My classroom was without heat from early fall until May 15th, or I'm sorry, March, sorry, March 15th. But still, early fall to March 15th, my classroom had no heat at all. Because when it was turned on, when the blower was turned on, it was that, that burning oil smell that was worse than freezing in the classroom. And just two weeks ago, the classrooms were 55 degrees. We were in there with our students in 55 degree classrooms. That should never happen, ever. And of course, we don't have AC because the heat's broken right now. One of the boilers supposedly is gone or something. I don't know. But I don't think we're going to have AC because it's all turned off right now because the heat wasn't working. And part of this is. We need more maintenance people in the city, which I know it's city side now, but we need more people to come and fix these things. The poor guy, the one guy, and I don't know his name, I apologize, who fixes the HVAC units, 
it took him until March 15th to have time to come and fix the heat in my classroom. The custodial staff, when I started teaching, which was almost 30 years ago, we had a lot more custodians in that building. And the building was able to be maintained better because we had enough people. The custodial staff at, at the high school and I'm sure the other schools, I believe has been cut in the past 29 years by about two thirds. I'm gonna guess on that, but I mean, we don't have enough people. That's a big building with a lot of issues. These are the things that should be in the budget for that beautiful money that we got that was extra. These are the things. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Good evening, Karen Mayo, 61 Harrison Ave, Peabody, Mass. I also work at the high school and I can verify everything Bonnie has just stated, and then some. Um, but that's not why I wanna talk. I basically wanna talk about the procedure and the budget itself. Um, I know you guys work hard to get it done. Believe me, I've been watching for years, or here I should say. Having the public meeting tonight to have us discuss things basically when the budget's done, it's already done, is a little disheartening to me. If we bring things up, could you change it? Yes. Can you change it during the year? Yes, I understand that. But I also think you might get more public participation if it looked like people could actually more or less get involved and maybe make changes. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with how it goes, but it just seems to have a public meeting the night you're going to approve a budget is a little off, you know, and maybe if you could check into seeing, and I know you're doing everything the way it's supposed to be done, and I think it's been done this way since I've been coming here, which is a long time, and I think maybe it's time for a change, because if people don't come and tell you what the problem is, or what they'd like to see. You may think it's one thing, they may think something else. I'm not saying you guys don't get calls, I know you do. I've called, I think, everybody, well, not you, John, but everybody else on here at one point or another. But that's a small population. Not everybody can call, not everybody knows what they can do. So maybe if we can make it a little more customer friendly, let's put it that way, because we are basically they're our customers, and they're the ones we should be listening to. So if parents really do need to speak, maybe they need a forum for it before a budget's done, or even the staff. You know, I've worked in the elementary, I've worked in middle, I've worked in high school. And they are correct when they say that we have lost custodians, we have lost maintenance. Yes, it did go all over to the city side. And maybe it does take longer to wait, but you can't teach in those conditions either if the building isn't maintained or kept up. So I think maybe at some point, you may wanna think about just switching this a little up. Not to give you guys more work, that's not what I'm looking to do, but if the budget is basically, this is what you know, maybe have a public hearing beforehand to see if things could get changed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayo. Dr. Vidaler, is there anybody online that wishes to speak? Seeing none. Ms. Carpenter. Thank you. Um, I just wanna thank everybody that came to speak tonight want you to know that we've heard you and uh, I do find some of the things that have been mentioned here tonight pretty disturbing um, 
I wrote down a lot of Ms. Anderson's list of uh, maintenance issues. So uh, through the chair to you, Dr. Vidala, if you're not too busy tomorrow, could you please address all of these issues at the high school? Um, the, the toilet seats, the exit sign, the wires in the science lab, these I believe are something that can be handled within our current budget, correct? Yes, yeah, so these, these are things that we have put in work orders for. Uh, I think these are things that you know, I'd love to work with the facilities uh, subcommittee around putting forth some capital funds to this. I, I think we had talked about in terms of the budgeting, uh, in previous years we bought textbooks out of the capital accounts, and this year we're buying textbooks and new curriculum resources out of ESSER funding, which will free up that money, I, and that's where I would like that capital funding to go, is, is to the high school bathrooms, locker rooms. Um, the door locks have been put in uh, last year and this year to, to redo all the door locks and rekey all the doors. Uh, we haven't seen any movement on that. That is something that we will be advocating for again, uh, hopefully a little bit louder this time. Okay. So I do recognize that some of these things will take an appointment and, and some, having somebody come out. I think that we should be able to immediately fix the bathroom issues though, those things could be taken care of like within the week, I'm, I'm thinking a toilet seat replacement, those type of things. We'll bring it to the, the facilities department and, and I hope that we can get that fixed as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, in regards to the maintenance and the custodians, yes, uh, it was in our budget at one time. It no longer is. Uh, people that have spoken here tonight are correct, it's on the city side. I will say as the um, chair of the liaison between the school committee and the city council, I will uh, reach out to the city side and see where they're at in that regard into um, hiring additional or, or getting us back to where we used to be for custodians and maintenance. Um, that has been something that we have discussed in the past and I know there is a hiring crisis, um, but I will reach out and find out where we stand in that regard with, with hiring there as it's no longer uh, under our uh, purview. Um, additionally, I'd like to address the uh, class sizes that were mentioned at the Carroll, and I'm sure there's some at some other schools as well. I know in a previous budget meeting, Dr. Vidaler, I did uh, speak to you about class sizes. Um, budgets are fluid, enrollment is fluid, things will change many times over the summer between now and the start of September, and then they will change again. I have asked you to please keep an eye on that and to reduce any of those classes that are at that size and hire uh, appropriately so that we lessen the stresses for our staff, because um, I do recognize everything that was mentioned tonight um, by Ms. Murray and, and other people that have reached out. So uh, again, I would just like to thank everybody that spoke. Uh, and um, I'll, I'll yield for now because I know there's some other comments. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Carpenter. I apologize for being late. I was actually at the high school at a school event my daughter was a part of. I apologize for missing. I did uh, hear, though, um, on the way over some comments and certainly the, the, the last speaker. I was glad I heard that. Um, so clearly I think we know work needs to be done over there. I can speak to uh, the, the hiring crisis that we are having. It is very real. We cannot find anybody to work uh, for custodia, as custodial positions. Right now we have seven open positions. Uh, we have advertised, we are not getting any applications. Uh, it's very concerning. It's the first time I've been mayor now, what, 11 years? And I cannot believe that we are having difficulty hiring positions. I remember the first few years as mayor, I um, could not go out and about without being asked for about positions uh, across the city in different jobs. And we cannot hire custodians, we cannot hire DPW, uh, we do not have a city electrician, a city mason. Anybody who is interested, and I like to take any of these opportunities where people are watching, anybody who is interested in uh, a city job, um, please contact Human Resources. I've been trying to get the newspapers to write stories on this, and it's not just Peabody, it's other cities as well. But right now we are down seven, and I know of three additional retirements that are coming in our custodial staff. It's having a real effect on our ability to get work done, uh, not just in the schools, which some of that was very disturbing, um, but in other city buildings as well. Uh, if not, we're going to have to look at other options because it's, we're down five in DPW laborer positions right now. That has never happened. And again, we don't have a city electrician or a mason that we've always had 
Um, we've had to uh, try to bring in some outside work, which is not something that we can do unless it's a, an emergency, but we're getting to that point where it's a real crisis for us. So um, I'm really concerned about custodial, uh, the, the effect it's having on our teachers and staff and powers that are putting so much time and effort in. Um, and it's, it's been difficult um, really to support them this year because of the lack of people that we have interested in working for the city. Um, but re right now they're all budgeted, fully budgeted, um, but they're vacant because we cannot find somebody. Um, I haven't mentioned this, but last week, I haven't mentioned this publicly because usually I bring this up at the city council. Last week we had six interviews set up for custodial positions. Not one person showed up for the interview, for an interview. Um, very disturbing. So um, I wanted to piggyback on what was mentioned um, specifically about work because the points made were absolutely true. They have to be fixed. Um, they will be fixed, but we need help, and I'm hoping that there might be people interested in working for the city, um, full-time, part-time. Um, again, it's, it's a hiring crisis across all municipalities. I, I can't think of one in discussions I have with my peers across the state that isn't having a similar problem, but it's really hitting us in custodial and DPW labor positions. So um, I didn't mean to go on a, 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 a speech on that, but it's, it's very real and I'm hoping that the more I speak about it, the more people might be interested and, and might apply for those positions because we need to support our students, our teachers, our paras, our, su our support staff. That's, uh, some of that is inexcusable. We gotta get that finished. And that's not the, the sole reason for it, but that is a reason and we gotta, we gotta fix that. I'm hoping that um, the word gets out and the message gets out and that people might be interested in those positions, but they are fully budgeted. Uh, when I present to the city council coming up on the city side, the maintenance and facilities will have f double digits of positions that are fully funded, that are open, and that we're looking to hire. So uh, anybody interested, please contact Human Resources. Um, sorry, but I want to take advantage of those opportunities where I, I can um, add my voice or talk about those particular issues. Um, and uh, anyway, sorry about that. Any, um, any other comments, Mrs. Dunn? Following up on what you said, Mr. Mayor, thank you for, for explaining it. I would like to ask if the school committee could be sent the information from the city budget concerning the, um, the custodial line items, the supplies, the materials. Those are all things that we used to be able to see in our budget. And we don't know what is budgeted because it is on the city side and the facilities are all run by the city side. But I, I, I would like to know if it's going to be adequate to cover all of the, the parts that we need, the toilet seats, the keying, the, um, the, the, the wiring, and that's only at one school. I know each of us get calls about different issues in schools or we see them ourselves, I'd like to ask what type of a process we should be following to report those because I know I report those, but occasionally I will hear back, 99% of the time I don't. So I never know what's, what's happening. I can't respond to the people who've contacted me. I do you know, pass that information along, but it is very frustrating and I have to thank everyone who spoke tonight. Everything you brought forward is really important for school committee members to hear. And Mrs. Anderson, thank you, because I had no idea about th some of those specific things, but I'll be honest, some of the other things Mrs. Anderson spoke about, we've been talking about for a long time. And, and they're things we really do need to be able to address. And um, it's difficult right now for us because it's not in our budget, so we Technically, we can't uh, we can't respond appropriately, but we're still trying to advocate for the schools, and I feel like I'm advocating in the dark many times. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn, and, and, and just to add a couple of things to that. Uh, yes, I mean certainly, the final budget on the city side is not completed yet. We should have that, I think, by the end of next week. Um, we'll be submitting it to the council on June 3rd and then the hearings will be set up. Uh, we're, I think we have the dates set, but we're still working on the final dates for the city council. Um, so one thing I did want to mention though, um, 
because it, it's important, is we've been, the union leadership for AFSME, who is custodial DPW, they've been terrific. We've had numerous meetings with them. They understand um, you know, that we're having trouble as well. We're trying to work together um, on, in terms of hiring. And, uh, but yeah, I will, we will get that information over to you. I, I have to take some responsibility here in terms of communication because there has been a breakdown in some communication. There's been um, principals and, and, and staff reporting issues. Um, some of it gets done, some of it doesn't. And I think there's some communication problems. When I proposed combining uh, the facilities, maintenance, um, it was, used to be city, used to be school. To me, it made sense to combine those where we could have a collective effort. If there's work that needs to be done in a school building or city building, it made sense to me that we would have more bodies, more people to work uh, by, by kind of sharing those responsibilities. There has been some things that have worked, others hasn't. And there's definitely been a communication breakdown. And uh, I have to accept responsibility of that. I gotta come up with a better way. The superintendent is, and, and I have talked about this, it's, it's not working the way it is now. So uh, that's on me. I got to get that better for this upcoming school year. Or now, actually, we still have a few more important weeks. Um, but a better system has to be put in place, and I have to uh, I have to help make that happen. So there's things that I think we can improve on. Um, we have to improve on, um, but it is uh, it's essential that we get some of these positions filled. And we'll get the information over to you regarding maintenance budgets, regarding. Um, the listing of all the, the, the staff and, and um, um, uh, members of those departments will get all that information over to you. Thank I, you, Mr. Mayor. And, and I do want to make a point of saying I'm asking for that as for, for informational purposes only because I know we do not have any authority on that as the school committee because that is under the city budget. But for informational purposes, it, it would be very helpful. Thank you. No, you're absolutely right. We'll get that over to you and um, yeah. Thank you, we'll get that information out. You need that information. And, and again, I, this was something I really th I thought could work, and I think it can. It's not working correctly right now. There's parts of it uh, are, but there's things that need to be improved. Because if not, then, um, well, we need to improve that. Any other comments at this time? Uh, Mr. Hockman, then I'll go back to you, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you um, for everyone that is here tonight. Thank you for everyone that spoke tonight. You certainly opened my eyes to some issues that um, I don't think I ever wanted to hear. Um, I hope never existed. Um, I just want to talk about this process and what my expectations are as a school committee member are. Um, I don't, I hope that we don't see staff members coming before the school committee in this forum to describe what you've described. It's my hope that the process allows for staff members, whether it be through their representation who were here tonight and uh, spoke eloquently in, about important issues, or the administration within the buildings in which you work, who do come to us um, each year and uh, speak to us about issues going on within each building. There are also leadership meetings that take place um, between the administration uh, at central office and administrators within each building. It's my hope that through that process and through those um, avenues that these issues are addressed. It's disheartening and it's scary that they're not. And, um, and I appreciate your willingness to take time out of your personal lives to come here to talk to us about these issues. Um, I know, you know, th this school committee is a pretty seasoned, grizzled group, and we're, we're open to communication um, on nights other than tonight about issues. Uh, so please feel, I hope you feel comfortable enough and, and freely enough to speak to us, um, whether it be, you know, at a, at a public school committee meeting or, or offline through email or or text or calling. Um, Ms. Mayo, I think you bring up a, a, an incredibly important point, and perhaps we do need to rethink this um, final leg of um, developing or passing a budget, and the developmenting, development of that budget. Um, so uh, that certainly gives me something to think about uh, as we move forward. I think there are some opportunities to, you know, Ms. Carpenter, 
certainly, and Mr. Mayor brought up uh, the health and safety issues that are um, extremely important at the high school that are, Ms. Anderson described, uh, need to be addressed immediately. Um, who's handling that? I think that that's, you know, the mayor and the superintendent will work together um, with the facilities manager and to, to, to get that done. Um, I do want to talk about class size a little bit at the Carroll School. Um, we are, um, we do have a redistricting committee that's convened. We do anticipate putting forward some proposals to the school committee in the fall. It won't have any impact on the 22-23 school year. It may have some impact on the 23-24 school year. Uh, the inequities that you raised are real. Um, we see them, we talk about them, we, we, we do try to uh, allocate resources to ensure that class sizes um, are appropriate, not just contractually, but educationally. Uh, it doesn't always occur, and some of the issues aren't even about um, the budget or, or hiring the, the proper number of people. It's room within buildings. You know, education has changed an awful lot since our newest elementary schools were built, which are 20 years now. They're not new buildings anymore. Uh, you know, rooms that weren't designed to be classrooms are being used for teaching because it is all the space that's available. We're looking at those areas and, and we're hopeful to come up with some solutions, um, but they're not gonna be for, you know, unless we hire teachers or find more space somewhere, um, the redistricting won't have an impact for at least another s school year. Um, but we, we, in any event, thank you for coming because what you say is important and we do listen to you um, and we do hope to be able to effectuate the changes that you're asking for um, because it's important to us that not only um, to make things right, but to value you as employees, to value the students that are in the buildings, to value um, each and every member of the PBD Public School Department. Um, we do put in a lot of hours as school committee members, but we, we chose to do this. Uh, and we're all happy to put in the hours to get the work done. Um, we appreciate the communication that, that does come to us, but maybe we should be, maybe we should, uh, Ms. Mayo brought it up for the budget, but maybe we should have some sessions where we have an opportunity to address um, members of bargaining units or they have an opportunity to address us in a forum that allows for communication um, to us from you so that we're not here on May 17th looking to vote on a budget and learn about some of the things that are going on. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've changed my mind on my original question, so I have a new one. And I want to thank Ms. Murray from the Carroll School for bringing something up. I would like to have the Carroll School uh, budget looked at again. If necessary, I will make a motion to add another teacher to that budget for classrooms. But please check what I'm looking at, and I'm, I'm going to read it right now. Tell me if I'm wrong. I look down at the enrollment. I look at the grid. On, this is on the bottom of page seven. FY22 enrollment, we had 553 students with 27 teachers and 20.5 on an average class size. FY23 enrollment projected is 585 students with only 26 teachers, an average class size of 22.5. Something's wrong there if we've increased the students and decreased the number of teachers already. I was going to ask for an extra teacher to begin with, and now I'm looking at the math on that page, and I can't calculate it quick, quickly enough, but I would like to make a motion that we add, let me take that back. I'd like to make a motion that that page be reexamined for accuracy 
And if this is accurate, if this is what it actually re reflects, that we're down one teacher already with an increase of potentially like 32 students, that's a whole classroom right there, we need to do something there and I would like to take care of that. And if necessary, I'll make a motion to include two new teachers, one to fix the paperwork and one to throw another one in there because you're gonna need it. So moved, however we wanna word that. Second. So, so Mrs. Dunn, as I'm looking at, the numbers above reflect four kindergarten teachers and 23 general ed teachers, so a total of 27 general ed teachers. The numbers below, it looks like numbers were moved up and there was one of the fives were dropped off. So we can look at that. It does look as though the grid may be wrong, but the budget is correct with, with four kindergarten teachers and 23 teachers in the general ed grades one through five. So it looks like there's 27 general ed teachers. Okay, and I'm, I am, I'm looking up above. It was quicker to look at the, at the grid. Uh, if I may, Mr. Mr. Mayor, if I can say well, how I, I looked at that. Um, so even in that case, and yes, I see what you mean. There hasn't been a change on the general ed teachers. But I do think we need to add someone in there. Those, those are huge class sizes. And I know that's a consideration too. I don't even know if this classroom space for an additional class, but that's, that's already projecting to need at least an additional teacher. All right, well, we do have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Dunn that was seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Let's open that up for discussion. If there's any comments that want to be made, Mr. Amico. Thank you, through the chair to Ms. Dunn. Thank you for that, that motion. Um, and to the committee, the most alarming part of, uh, and, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the uh, staff member from the Carroll, was the um, 600 students with one adjustment counselor. Mm -hmm. um, that's very concerning to me. Um, through the chair to Ms. Dunn, if, if you're looking to add a teacher, I would also like to add an adjustment counselor there. I, I just don't see how one person can see, and I understand there are, there are different um, reasons for having an adjustment counselor in, in, a, in a building, um, but when you have 600 students and you have one adjustment counselor, those students are going through that school and then they're going to the middle school um, that's the largest building in our elementary out of, out of the eight, I believe. And to have one adjustment counselor, and, and, I, do, and I do believe the ELL population is, is rather high there as well. Um, in addition to the teacher, I, I, would, I would see if he'd like to amend that motion or make a separate motion to add a, an adjustment counselor as well. I'll be right up front, I've always told people, um, my daughter is a school adjustment counselor, so I don't vote on anything uh, about staffing the school adjustment counselors. If you could make a separate motion, she's not at that building, but it's, I, I try to keep it very, very um, ethical on those votes. You can make a separate motion. I will vote present, um, but. Okay. I need uh, you do have the a pending um, issue, vote. Any other comments on the item? Mr. Hockney? May I just have the motion read to me just so I understand it? I'll, I'll condense it because I fixed it. <laughs> we need to add another teacher to the Carroll School budget at a minimum. It was one. Okay. Yeah. It's. So the motion, Mrs. Dunn, is to add one teacher new at the Carroll right. Elementary School. Right. There was seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Yeah. Any other comments? Mr. Hockman. Thank you. Um, Ms. Dunn, can we, I ask you to make a slight amendment to your motion to uh, add one teacher at the Carroll School specifically to be used in the fifth grade? Actually, you know something? I, I think that's, that's good, but I'll be honest. I think we... And people need to understand too. If the class, if, if you have a huge another huge influx of students, 
and, and you need another staff person, we will be here giving the superintendent uh, the ability to hire additional people because, as Mrs. Carpenter said, budgets are fluid, and on the issue of class size and enrollment, if it came up and we had to hire additional staff to split those classes again, that would be done. Um, you'll, you'll, you'd know pretty much around August. That's why I kind of pulled back when I realized that the paper, the, the top, the, 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 the funding lines are okay. It was the uh, synopsis at the bottom that's incorrect. But um, we know right now that the fifth grade sounds like it would be overcrowded, but I, I would like to hold off on us being that specific, but just being able to let that additional staff person, because I think we're gonna need another one, to be honest, but at least to let that staff person be uh, hired and assigned and leave that you know, with the superintendent, because again, I have no idea what they'll do in that building. I don't know if they have enough classrooms to, to split students down. You know, the logistics of the building, it's really full. So I, I, um, I didn't want to get that specific with the grade. <laughs> Any other comments? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Amico? Thank you. Through the chair, I'd like to um, add an additional counselor, um, whether it's guidance or adjustment counselor, to the Carroll School for the year 2022-2023. Second. Thank you, Mr. Miko. You've heard the motion. It was seconded by Mr. Olympio. Any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, seeing none, roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Present. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or topics to bring up? Okay, Mr. Amico? So I, I want to thank the uh, superintendent Dr. Vidala, his staff, for putting this budget together. Mayor, you and your, your team for putting, helping with this. Um, school committee, um, Mr. Hockman, Mr. Swanson, Ms. Dunn, Ms. Carpenter, Mr. Olympio. Um, you're right, uh, Mr. Hockman, it's a privilege for us to serve as elected officials on this. Um, we, don't, we certainly don't do it for the money. Um, we do it because we want to help people, um, and we truly put Students first, um, and I'll speak for myself, teachers are a close, close second because they're the first and last offense. Um, and I respect them as much as any other profession. I'm in the profession so I can say that and I truly believe that. Um, there, are, there are items in this budget that I'm um, really excited about. Um, there are things in here that quite frankly have disappointed me. Um, but mostly good, some bad. I mean, it's, 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 it is what it is. Um, one of the things that I'll look at on a positive end is, I think we are advocating for kids. We're advocating for teachers. Um, we're putting uh, people in place to help kids, help teachers, and help parents. And that's evident in some of these new additions. Um, one of the things that is, is, is certainly disappointing to me is a motion was made on this floor about a month ago to allow eighth grade students here at the Higgins to um, enroll in an Italian class for their freshman year. It was discussed, it was voted unanimously, and nothing has happened. Eighth grade students will not be taking Italian at the high school next year. It wasn't offered to them. That to me is disappointing. There are some other issues in here that are disappointing to me. I am okay with honoring a contract of an employee. I am not okay with creating a new position. We just hired an assistant superintendent 
of special ed services, pupil services. It took about six years to get that position. It took a lot of work to get that position. And I think we have a great one in Dr. Higgins. We then interviewed a candidate for a special ed position, special ed director, and she was phenomenal and will do an incredible job. I do not think a newly created position under that position at central office is needed. I think, I think it's a duplicate position. Again, I'm okay with honoring a contract, but I would like to cut that pupil service position in a motion. Second. You've heard the motion by Mr. Amico, it was seconded by Mr. Olympio. Any comments or questions on the motion? You okay, mister? She looked deep in thought. I didn't want to, uh, again. Okay. Mr. Miko. Sure. Through the chair to Ms. Dunn, it's, it's formerly the assistant SPED director position that was newly named. And again, I would, I just want to make a motion to cut the position, but not the um, contracted end of the part of that. Thank you. Okay, any comments or questions? Mr. Swanson? Thank you, to, you, to Mr. Miko. So you, just for clarity, you're asking for that position, that title to be removed, but the person that would fill that to go, I'm gonna use trash, but somewhere else, to, to, to find another position for them. I would direct the superintendent to, to find another location, but cut that title, yes. Thank you. Just because I, I feel it's a duplicate position. Thank you. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? No. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? No. Mr. Swanson? No. Mrs. Dunn? No. Any other items to be brought forward, Mr. Miko? Thank you, through the chair of the committee. I'd like to make an adjustment on the, um, on our budget. It is line number um, 22032 in the amount of in the amount of 10,000 Oh, actually, that's the wrong one, excuse me. No, it is, it's right. Small. Uh, is it oh, excuse me, here it is. It's uh, line number 22032, contracted services in the amount of um, $12,000. I like to cut that. Is that the law? That's that's not what is it twenty is, which one is that one then? Twenty two old Yep. That's okay, I'm sorry. So uh, sorry, these are a little bit small. Line not line item twenty two zero three four, which is the central advertising in the amount of thirteen thousand. So moved. Twenty two zero 
22034. That is the um, central advertising PR. Yeah, I'm having my, I didn't bring my readers with me. Anybody, everybody have that? Second. Thank you, Mr. Miko. You've heard the motion. It was seconded by Mr. Olympio. Any comments or questions on that motion? Mrs. Carpenter. Thank you. That line item, uh, it's, um, thir is it 13,000? Two two zero three four. And what exactly do we use that line item for? So that is a communication firm that helps us with crisis management, helped us with a number of employee and student issues this year, uh, with relationship with the media, uh, including the middle school dance issue and, and some other issues that we had. Uh, that's what that is. That, that's what that line item is. We discussed it last year a little bit. We level funded it this year. Um, personally, I found them to be helpful for the community uh, and helpful for for the district. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, what does um, what does City Hall do in that regard with their PR? Do you use uh, Mr. Ryder? Yes, we. Um, we have done that internally through our uh, chief of staff in the mayor's office. I will also, I would like to say though that um, I was uncertain about that funding when it was first proposed, but I, I do think that there's been great value that has been provided from that. Um, um, I can say that a number of uh, other cities have actually uh, significantly more to that line, out, line item. Um, so, um, I do think there's some value there, but in terms of city issues, we've done that internally. Thank you. Um, when it comes down to a, a couple of things that could possibly be reduced tonight in the funding of those items, um, there is something that was brought up a few times during our meetings and by um, Mrs. Mayo, and, and we haven't discussed it, and it's been transportation. Um, one of the things that we need to do is we need to get the um, final vote on the transportation, the offset, and um, the fees. So it is my intention that uh, if there are any motions tonight that pass and any of these reductions that those monies will be sent over, and I will make that motion once we're complete, to the transportation line, the offset, to reduce the uh, parent fee for the, the offset to reduce the uh, parent fee for the transportation lines. Um, if I'm reading the budget correctly, the, the offset before was about 290,000. Um, I realize this is currently 13,000, but I think every little bit will help. Um, so Mr. Amico, if you're making a motion to reduce something that I I think that we can probably borrow City Hall for. Uh, yep. That's something I would be in favor of. Thank you. Sure, and through, through the chair to Ms. Carpenter, um, and, and the reason, I just feel there's a, it, it's redundant. We, 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 have a, we have plenty of administrators and central office personnel that, that could help write a uh, press release. And I, and, I, and I was thinking, I agree with you, some of that offset can go to transportation, but I was also thinking some of that offset can go um, to athletics because we've had um, we've had you know at athletic teams and boosters in front of us and 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 we heard the stories of some of the things that they're paying for and, um, and I know we've increased the athletic budget but um, you know I'm I'm still hearing rumblings that things aren't paid for and um, I'd love to see money go back to kids kids were the ones who suffered the most during COVID during those two years and anything that we have extra, I'd love to put it back into student services, into athletics, performing arts, um, but to your point, also transportation because we, we have a need there as well, so yes. One thing I did want to ask, and if we can't get the answer today, we can get it um, very quickly. Um, I was always under the impression that um, free and reduced lunch um, students 
do not pay for busing. I just want to clarify and confirm that. Is that a, is that yeah, I thought. Mr. I thought Mayor, that. I believe that to be true. Okay. Um, all right, that, I just want to make sure that that's clarified because I was asked about that earlier. They, they pay, some pay nothing, some pay a, a lower fee. A, a um, portion of it? A portion. Same with athletic fees? Mm -hmm. and Chromebook fees? Yeah. Okay. I was asked earlier and I said yes, but I wanted to make sure I kind of second guess myself. <laughs> Mrs. Dunn, did you have a comment or are there any other comments? Your light was on, I just. It, well, it actually, it was, it was just to give you th that information, but also to say that um, a, a lot of people um, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons that universal free lunch will be, has been wonderful and will be wonderful for all of our students is because the stigma of um, free and reduced lunch is taken away. Everybody's equal. And on the issue of the transportation fees, there are many families who will not go down to transportation and negotiate the fee. Um, and even with the negotiated fee, they can't afford it. And there are a lot of kids and you see them walking from downtown to get to the high school because they just can't afford the bus. And they probably could if someone processed the paperwork for them. I don't know that. Um, but it is it is an issue, and, and, and I agree with Mrs. Carpenter. Mrs. Mayo spoke very eloquently about the problem of students uh, getting to school and the fact that we have uh, bus fee, it's, to my understanding, and Mr. Fleming, I hate to throw you under the bus, literally under the bus tonight on your first night here, but we had requested a while ago what the actual um, fee generated for an offset. And I don't know if you'd even be prepared to answer that tonight. If you are, that's wonderful. And congratulations on taking the job. And if you don't, I, I fault you, not one iota. I'll go off on a philosophical conversation here that no matter what we take in on those bus fees, it's, it's symbolic at this point because it doesn't cover the cost of busing. Uh, it does prevent students from getting the bus. Sometimes some of the kids who really need it because they live so far away that by the time they get to school, they're late. And we have issues with kids who get to school late and that figures in on the absence totals and it's just a huge, big issue. It's bigger than just not getting a ride to school. So um, again, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you've got the information, great. Sure. Uh, I don't have the information. Okay. Offhand, it's no problem. Love to get back to you on that. Okay. Good to meet you too, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Swanson. Through to uh, Dr. Vidal. If this position let me stop, sorry, rephrase my question. Is this line item a retainer fee or is it a budget that is chipped away at each, each um, time you engage the services? So it's a $12,000 line item, it's at $1,000 a month. So if we were to stop it, we would, it, it, it's, it's only paid monthly, basically. Uh, but you know, I, I have found it to be useful. Uh, it, it's helped us in more, uh, less with the, with the writing press releases and more with the crisis management uh, has been helpful. So again, through you, Dr. Vidala. So you, it's labeled it as advertising, um, but I guess they're helping you with, with internal situations as well? Yes, they provide guidance and support 24-7 uh, if, if you have an issue. Uh, if they're contacted by, if we're contacted by the news media for something, they help us navigate that. They have relationships within within the media. Um, they've also helped us, you know, when, you know, in, in, in bigger situations as far as press conferences and things like that. Um, they've helped set up that. Uh, they were able to get um, some positive media coverage to the McCarthy uh, a couple weeks ago that uh, when they were highlighting the uh, SEL libraries. Um, so it, it does, you know, there, there is a piece that, that paints the district in good light, but also the crisis management piece is very helpful. Thank you, and again, I don't disagree with the other comments that everybody's made, just looking for information. If this is eliminated, I guess, how was this done before the, this, this firm was help working with you? So it's done internally, uh, and so, you know, there are times when things might 
you know, there could be a misstep or you might be, you know, for, for example, there was an issue at the high school that I went to directly and I was attending to and they helped um, with some communication for us with families. Um, and then we were able to do that. So I was able to be boots on the ground and they were able to be drafting things for me in the background, which was helpful. Um, I know that there are some surrounding communities that wish they had some support over some of their issues that they've had and we've been able to navigate them um, because they think of things that we don't think of uh, and they've, they've been through this before. So they, they are a valuable resource uh, from, from what I found. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we do have a motion on the floor. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? No. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Amico? One more, thank you. Um, I'd like to make a motion to cut line item 22036, school committee legal fees in the amount of $15,000. Um, the reason why um, I feel as though we have city solicitors and legal help um, from the city that we can utilize. So moved. Second. Okay, you've heard the motion made by Mr. Amico, seconded by Mr. Olympio. Open it up for discussion, Mrs. Carpenter. To clarify, is it, did you say $15,000? Through the chair to Ms. Carpenter, it is, it is budgeted for $15,000 for FY23. Um, 15, um, and this is for the, um, the additional lawyers, the, uh, it's like a retainer, is that what this is? Yes, it's an hourly fee. We have an open PO for 15000 and when the city solicitor is unavailable, uh, we have them on retainer to come in and help us with legal issues. Okay. Um, again, I, I would support the, the reduction of that position. I, I think that um, when, these, when these first came up, you know, I'm just going to be perfectly honest and, and just remind everyone when these came up I wasn't in support of them I'm still not in support of them so I will be voting to eliminate this the the PR one you know I didn't support I, I think that we have a very competent team of people the educators people that can write very nicely and make decisions the uh, additional attorneys this is no surprise Dr. Vidala we've talked about it no disrespect to you whatsoever um, I feel we have a very competent team of attorneys and we we work really well um, with Attorney Khan, and, and I've never felt the need for them, so I will still continue to, you know, vote in the in the way of eliminating it. Um, and again, it will be my intention to use this fifteen thousand to reduce the bus fees, um, with the intention of completely eliminating them. But I don't have the full amount of the the only offset that I see in there was like two hundred and ninety thousand. Um, so I don't have the full amount, and we're certainly not anywhere close to two hundred and ninety thousand of an offset for transportation uh, parent fees. So I will be in support of this. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Carpenter. I did want to speak to this, and, and I, I wanted to um, mention, at least talk, uh, give my thoughts on this, because this is, um, even though it's 15,000, I do think, I do believe there's great value to this $15,000, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we do have a, a team of city solicitors that have been terrific. I, I think they're an excellent group very seasoned, uh, very experienced, and very uh, capable of handling a number of items, but they're not capable of handling every item. Just to give you an idea, uh, on the city end, we have a number of items that come up that need specialized, specific attention. Um, the big item um, over the last couple of years, or a major item that we've been dealing with as a city, and all of you know it, is the affordable housing. We needed to bring in a specialty attorney on, the, uh, on that item to work with the Zoning Boards, Board of Appeals and the Planning Board because um, that is kind of a specialized area of law that needs a specific person to, to handle it. Um, 
We have, again, general practice attorneys that handle a wide variety of things very capably. But there, do, there does come up year to year a number of items that require some specific um, specialty area of knowledge. Um, I think that this is kind of what, and you know, I, I, Dr. Vidala will speak to it maybe, um, I think he's gone to this particular attorney who specializes in certain areas of education law. Um, most times, uh, Attorney Khan is, is ready, willing, and able to answer those, but there have been items that have come forward, like on the city end, where we've had to go and uh, seek additional funding uh, for um, specific issues, like affordable housing, the, the um, Mass General Laws Chapter 40B, which is a uh, been a very difficult issue and is constantly evolving and changing and the rules and regulations are changing. So I do think this uh, does provide the uh, superintendent and his team some flexibility on certain issues and items. Uh, and I wanted to speak to that uh, because it does happen on the city end as well. Yes, Mr. Mika. Thank you. Uh, through the chair to the committee, I will withdraw my motion on that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mika. Mr. Hockman? Um, I was going to advocate for the mayor to provide us with an additional $15,000 to accomplish both things uh, <laughs> so that we can have a, a, an offset that Ms. Carpenter's talking about uh, for transportation fees and keep the legal line because I agree with the mayor that there is value to this. Uh, I guess I don't have to ask for that, but I am at the same time. No, I, I, I'm bothered as all of you by bus fees and athletic fees and any any fees that you know are, are charged to families. That's why I wanted to clarify because I was asked earlier a couple of questions by a resident on on that, and I again I kind of froze because I was uncertain for a moment. Um, yeah, I I, I I can commit to to putting some additional funds to go to directly to bus fees, um, and then I think we take it up in future meetings to where we stand on those and athletic fees and. Um, those are the two that jump out at me, but there might be others as well that need to be reviewed. So, um, uh, thank you, Mr. Miko. I, you know, that um, I did want to speak to that one because we've run into some issues. So I appreciate that. Turn it to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just, just on the transportation through the chair of the transportation um, situation, maybe we can um, can we get a, a an amount on what students are paying per? Is it? Is it 300 per student and it's capped to 500 by family? 600? If you could, through the chair, to Mr. Hockman. Yeah, my, my belief is that it's 300 per student, 600 per family. I'm not sure if we're still doing the one-way fees that Ms. Carpenter introduced no. a while ago. We're not. Um, and maybe that's something we can take up. But I agree with the mayor, if, if I may, Mr. Miko, you know, maybe we just have a uh, agenda item on a regular meeting and take this up and see if we can come up with some solutions. I'd like to do that, and then I also would like to, just something that we were speaking about earlier, I know we're working on the budget now and, and, and some items, um, you know, we have to finish this process, but I, I would, after we completed, after we complete the budget review, I would like to work on my end and then present to the school committee um, some adjustments and changes we can make to uh, the facilities and some of the maintenance work. Um, I'd like to do that, uh, seek input, of course, uh, but I have some ideas, and uh, I'd like to present that to the council in, in anticipation of a much better process uh, for the next, for the upcoming school year, which is, is needed. So um, we'll put that, we'll set that up for a future meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sir Miko, you still have the floor. On that, on the uh, point on the transportation, if through the chair to uh, Mr. Fleming, <laughs> if we could probably, uh, well, not probably, for, the, for let's say the next meeting, um, get a breakdown on um, how much it would cost us, the school committee, the city, to get that fee down from say um, 500 to 300 and, and maybe give us some options there. Um, we do have some ESSER money that we could possibly use over the next couple of years. Um, so just maybe give us a little bit of a menu of what, um, I don't know if we can bring it down to zero, that's gonna be a, a very large task, but maybe um, if we can chip away at that and see what, um, what it's gonna cost us as a city. Sure, great, that's something I'd love to, love to take on. 
Thank you, Mr. Miko. I think that's good. Mrs. Kapaner. Thank you. So, what I'm looking at in the budget for, for the transportation line does not show a fee offset at all. So, is, is what I'm looking at, because there's an increase of um, almost 450000 is this line here for regular transportation fully funded and not even including an offset? Ms. Carpenter, can you just give me the line again? Go to tab um, 21. Um, 212. Because if there's no even estimated offset and it's fully funded, then there are no parent fees. So there's, there is not an offset in the budget. The fees would go into the, a revolving account, and then we would create a revolving account manual that, that would be able to pay for overages and, and things like that. Um, so that money in would be paying for um, things like, um, I think it, it offsets the health insurance for, uh, I think there's a payment directly from the revolving account for health insurance for transportation staff, as well as uh, for any, any extra runs that we need to do for field trips and things like that. So we can get a breakdown of the revolving account, uh, but it wasn't put into this to lower the budget. It was put into the revolving account so that they, because that's where the money goes in, so that that money could then be spent um, on the transportation department. So in years past, the budget was lowered by that amount. Right. And we've put all of that money going into the revolving account so that uh, we have a revolving account manual on the uh, district website and so that that money would then go to supplement the transportation budget on top of And where can have. I see how that generated in the revolving account? So we can do a breakdown. I can have, we can do a breakdown of, of that specific revolving account, the ins and outs, um, and we can bring that to the committee. So I guess, what, I guess what I'm saying is like, if I don't see it in this budget, then we don't need it for the transportation line because it looks like right here it's fully funded. So this is our contractual amount that we have with Healy. Yep. There are times when we go over that number and, and that those runs would be paid for out of the revolving account. So we can get a breakdown of, of exactly so what that wait, looks like. Did you, so you just said this is the contractual amount with Healy and anything that goes over this amount is paid from the revolving account. That's what I believe. And we can look into that. You know, I can have Mr. Fleming do a little bit of a deep dive into this because I know last year we did, we did raise that, that amount. Because if that's the case, then we're fully funded. I don't know if that is the case, so let's, we, we, will, we will go in and do a deep dive and, and get all of that information to you. So, he, so here's where we're at. This is definitely something I wanna pursue and, and, and I don't have all of the information. And I don't know where that information is going to take me after tonight. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add to this, but in my, what I'm looking at is no bus fees in this budget. Yeah. Mr. Hawkman has his hand. I know he wants to say something. <laughs> I'll yield to Mr. Yield. Hawkman. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Carpenter. Mr. Hawkman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. I was jumping up and down. I didn't. Uh, people saw me, and the cameras were shaking, and. Uh, I don't, respectfully, I understand what you're saying in the belief that we're fully funded for the transportation line. But I think what Dr. Vidaler is saying is the, we, we generate fees, right? We collect money and they're used to offset other lines. So if we don't generate the fees, those other lines, I understand that. The other thing too, and, and believe me, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be, you know, People that I'm um, kind of disappointed maybe that there's not scholarship opportunities for families that can't 
pay the, the bus fee as it exists, but also don't qualify for free or reduced lunch. And maybe that's something we can take up somewhere at this meeting where we talk about this issue. I just want to caution the committee in terms of the slippery slope that you're now on. That transportation line, if there's no bus fee, is going to quadruple. Because people who now get to school on their own, if there's no fee, are going to get on a bus. And if they get on a bus, we're going to add buses. And for each bus that we add, we're going to add to that line. So while I'm, I, I, I applaud the committee for advocating for reduced bus fees. I'm not a fan of them myself. But, um, and certainly for folks that have a difficult time making ends meet and we need to help, we, we should always help those that are in need. Um, but a, 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 an elimination of a bus fee may have a, a consequence that is not intended. Thank you, Mr. Hockman. Any other thoughts on this item? This is a good topic. I um, want to give anybody opportunity to add to it if they have some thoughts now. Okay. Yeah, Mrs. Kaplan. With that being said, I recognize that. I do recognize that. Um, We do have to address the bus fees. This does have to go out. It's usually in the mail. People are having their, you know, we set the fee. For the next school committee meeting, I would request that this is on the agenda. We have the specific dollar amount. Um, and again, as this budget, as I say every year, is fluid, and I know there is money still in the budget, that this is the main topic that we're going to discuss and finalize. And uh, it is my intention for any of the monies that we do recoup or um, we are eliminating tonight or any extra funding that we do address the, um, the bus fees. So can we put that on the next school committee agenda? And will we have all those figures for the next meeting? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scoffender. Good item. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Olympio. Yeah, no, through the chair, uh, Ms. Carpenter, great, uh, great point, and also Mr. Hawkman, great point. I think it's definitely worth, you know, peeling the onion, see exactly where we stand, but with the caution flag, with, um, you know, what could, you know, unintended uh, consequences down the road. So definitely, uh, I'm looking forward to dive into this a little bit deeper in the coming meetings. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lippio. This is done. Actually, in, in line with that conversation, normally we would have, um, you know, the information about revolving accounts when we're talking about the budgets. Could we also have uh, the information about how much is brought in on athletic fees as well so that we, we could have that discussion t at the next meeting? Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay. Mr. Olympio, turn it over to you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed salary line item in the FY 2023 budget in the, in the amount of $56,158,935. Second. Thank you. You've heard the motion by Mr. Olympio, seconded by Mrs. Carpenter for discussion. Mrs. Dunn? Did, just a question through, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Olympio. Did that add in the, the additional fee for an additional teacher? Just that general... Uh, yeah, did you take it through? Okay, thank you. Um, well, I, I think we need to, if it's not a budget, if we're not taken from somewhere, I would think we have to uh, add it to the overall budget. Yeah. 
That's what I'm thinking is that we have to add a like hundred. Fifty thousand. What with was the, it in general? Is it fifty thousand dollars? So in, in general, general, we budget a new teacher at sixty-five. Okay. Um, I would also recommend that we add the amount of of um, health insurance to that employee benefit line okay. if we're going to fund it correctly. Um, so we'd be looking at I would say a hundred and seventy-five thousand for two positions. So sixty-five and sixty-five is one thirty, and twenty-two and twenty-two is another forty-four. That, that's that's what I would recommend to fully fund okay. two additional positions. Okay, yeah, that makes thank sense you. And we would just add, we would just adjust those figures really quickly um, to make them accurate. Yeah, I think we need to make that adjustment. And then, if I'm, my understanding is that the twelve thousand uh, that we deducted is just going to be attributed to the transportation line item. I think, yeah, I think that was what the motion would do. So okay. I got. Well, I don't know though, because if it's going to go towards Mrs. Carpenter, is that what? Uh, it was thirteen. <laughs> was it thirteen? Well, I thought it was twelve, but if it's thirteen, but that would go direct. That would go to transportation. Yeah. So. So we need to add that. Uh, I have fifty-six. Yeah, I have fifty-six million. Three hundred thirty-three thousand nine thirty-five. That's a plus one seventy-five. So to be completely accurate, if we could do one thirty to that line, and then for the non-salary, if we could add the forty-five to the non-salary, so it would be okay. fifty-six to eighty-eight nine twenty-five. Okay, ladies. Okay, so it's just. So just 130 to the salary line, correct? 130 to the salary. Yep. So I got 56 million, 288, 935 dollars, and then 26,947, and then the non. Salary items are twenty six million nine hundred ninety two thousand nine sixty seven. And then we got to add one hundred and seventy five to the two, total. Four, five, six. There's six people adding it up. I'm going to trust your numbers. <laughs> Our finance chair is right on this. <laughs> this one. Total. Hold on. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Now we got to add the total. So I got $83,281,902. And okay. Take that first item, uh, the proposed salary line item, $56,288,935. The motion was made by Mr. Olympio. Seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Any comments? Yeah. Mr. Olympio. Yeah. So on these three motions that we'll be uh, voting on tonight, though, the first one, as I stated probably about a month ago, um, I just have a difference of a professional opinion on the salary lines, uh, admin versus uh, classroom salary. So I'll be voting against the salary line, but Obviously, the overall budget and what we're spending, I feel, is it more than adequate. And the non-salary line, I'm fine with. But I, again, I just have a difference in professional opinion on where the, the items on the salary. So I'll be voting no on that. Thank you, Mr. Olympio. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio. No. Mrs. Carpenter. Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Olympio. Okay. Can you make that next motion? Yep. I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the proposed non salary line item in fiscal year budget 2023 in the amount of $26,992,967. Okay. Heard the motion by Mr. Olympio, seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Roll call vote, please. 
Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve uh, the proposed total budget for FY 2023 in the amount of $83,281,902. Second. Heard the motion made by Mr. Olympio to approve the total 2000 FY23 budget of $83,281,902. Seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Okay, any final items before we break? We have our next regular school committee meeting a week from tonight, the 24th. I will let the committee and, and uh, everybody know the city council schedule. I've been working with uh, finance chair Peter McGinn, council McGinn, and we're looking at some dates uh, the middle two weeks of um, June, and I'll let everybody know uh, that schedule. I think we're locking in on the 16th and the 21st and the 23rd. I just don't know yet uh, the plan. I'll get that information out as soon as I can. All right, any final items? Motion to adjourn the fiscal year 23 budget. Thank you, Mr. Hockman. You've heard the motion seconded by Mr. Swanson. All in favor, that's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>